Hello! Welcome to the quadratic vertex method. In this slideshow, I'm going to show you an easier way of solving quadratic functions. And in this more complete slideshow, I'm actually going to derive the formula. My name is Mike Callahan, and I am a STEM educator. It turns out that if you know the vertex of a quadratic function and something called the a coefficient, you can find the roots. So let's see how this works by looking at the three forms of quadratics. They're called the vertex form, the standard form, and the factored form. We'll start with the vertex form, and that looks like f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. The nice thing about this form is it gives you the vertex. The vertex is going to be at h comma k. The coefficients a is determines the width of the parabola. h is the horizontal dimension or the x value of the vertex. This is called the axis of symmetry and you'll see why in just the next slide. Notice the negative sign is not included with the h. And k is the vertical dimension or the y value of the vertex. So we have a graph of a quadratic function here. And we have indicated where the roots are. In this case, the roots are on the x-axis, where the parabola intersects the x-axis. And that's going to be, of course, y equals 0. Notice that this is also k units above the vertex. And this will be important later on. So just keep that in the back of your mind. The parabola is balanced around the x value of the vertex, and this is why we call this the axis of symmetry. You can see that the parabola is perfectly balanced around the axis of symmetry. The roots are simply going to be at h plus or minus some offset, and we've labeled that d. So looking at it, the equation is just going to be simply x equals h plus or minus d. All we have to do now is find out what d is dependent on. So if we can discover what determines d, we can solve any quadratic function. Let's look at k. We know if we change k, the parabola is going to be moving vertically, and that will affect d. Decreasing k decreases d. So d is a function of k. So we'd write that d equals f of k. Let's see how d is affected by a. If we change a, the parabola's width is going to change, and of course that will affect d. Increasing a will decrease d. So d is a function of k and a, but it's going to look like d is equal to f's of k over a. So empirically, we see that d is a function of k and a. But let's derive the exact function. So we're going to start with the vertex form, and we're going to set y equal to 0 and we're going to solve for x. Let's derive the exact formula for d. We start with the vertex form of the quadratic equation. and We set it equal to 0. Now we move k to the right side of the equation. We move a to the right side of the equation. And we take the square root of both sides, so we're going to end up with a plus or minus 
the square root of minus k over a. Finally, we move h to the right side, and we have our desired equation. x is going to be equal to h, which is the axis of symmetry, plus or minus the square root of minus k over a. So d is the square root of minus k over a. It's time to introduce what we call the vertex root formula. So given a quadratic in the vertex form, the root is simply x equal to h plus or minus that d, which we found out to be the square root of negative k divided by a. Notice for a real solution, k and a must have opposite signs. And see how simple this equation is to memorize? And you're going to see how easy it is to use. But I want you to step back and realize what this equation says. Even though we derived it for a quadratic in the vertex form, this equation will work with any quadratic. So the roots of any quadratic can be quickly found if you know the vertex. Let's label our graph correctly. So we know what d is now. And it's simply the square root of minus k over a. So we have our roots. One is h minus the square root of k over a. The other one is h plus the square root of negative k over a. And again, this graph will work for all parabolas, not just ones in vertex form. Let's run through a simple example. We want to find the roots of 2 times the quantity of x minus 5 squared minus 8. Set it equal to 0. We know that a is equal to 2. h is equal to 5. Again, notice the negative sign did not get translated. And k is equal to negative 8. In this case, the negative sign did get translated. That's the only thing you have to be careful with. The vertex is 5 and minus 8. Plugging it into our vertex root equation, we have 5 plus or minus the square root of negative, negative 8 divided by 2. Well, that's 5 plus or minus the square root of 4, which is equal to 5 plus or minus 2. So our x values are x equals 3 or x equals 7. See how simple that was? Let's check it, and I'm not going to go through the check. I'm going to leave it up here, and you can see that, indeed, the math checks out. Both the roots, when you plug them in, turn out to be 0. Unfortunately, most of the time, we are given a standard form of a quadratic function. So we need a method for determining the vertex for a quadratic in standard form. Once we know the vertex, we can use that vertex root formula that we used on the previous slides to find the roots. So we're going to try to convert the vertex form into the standard form. Here's the standard form. This is what we're shooting for. And this is what we're starting with. First thing we're going to do is we're going to expand upon that x minus h squared. We're going to work out all the terms. Now we're going to distribute the a inside the terms. And now we're going to regroup to try to match the standard form. After regrouping, we end up with this. Notice that a is the same in both forms. B is just equal to minus 2AH. And C is going to be AH squared plus K. So we've accomplished our goal. Now let's solve using that first equation for B to get the axis of symmetry. Well, it's very simple. All you have to do is take the terms minus 2A and throw them over to the left side of the equation. 
So we end up with h equals minus b divided by 2a. This is the axis of symmetry. It is the negative of the b coefficient divided by twice the a coefficient. Now this is not a surprise. This is actually a well-known equation. Now let's develop the equation for k. Well, you can see that it's pretty easy. All we have to do is move the ah squared to the other side of the equation, and we have what we want. k is equal to coefficient c minus the coefficient a times h squared. Now this equation might be a surprise. And notice it should be easy because we already have c and a and we've already calculated h so all we have to do is just square h. Now this is not the way you usually are taught to find k. The standard method is to insert h as x and solve the entire equation. So we end up with f of h. Let's do that. Let's take h, plug it into the standard form, and calculate k. We've done that, plugged in our equation for h in both terms. And in the first term, we've squared h. In the second term, we have b times b, so we have b squared. And we want to kind of match the denominators, so we, on the second term, we've multiplied the top and the bottom times 2a. And notice we have b over 2a in both terms. We can just square both of those terms. And that indeed is negative h. Since it's squared, the negative goes away. And we plug in our original equation for h back in. And we have a h squared minus 2a h squared plus c. Well, the first two terms cancel. We have minus a h plus c. Rearranging, we end up with k equals c minus a h squared. So this proves that there is no need to evaluate the second term in the standard form at x equals h. So here is the vertex method for the standard form. The formula are h equals minus b over 2a k equals c minus a h squared and the old vertex root equation we've developed earlier x equals h plus or minus the square root of minus k over a. So using the vertex method for standard form all you have to do is take a and b and calculate h then a c and h and calculate k and notice the vertex is at h k again this is useful information many times now we have a, h, and k. We can find x. And I believe this will be much easier than using the full-blown quadratic formula. So using this new method, let's run through a simple example. We're given the quadratic of x squared plus 6x minus 16. Solving for h and k using a equals 1, b equals 6, c equals minus 16 h is just simply going to be 6 divided by minus 2 times 1 or that's minus 3. k is going to be minus 16 minus 1 times negative 3 squared so that's minus 16 minus 9 or negative 25. So the vertex is at minus 3 minus 25. Using this information in the vertex root formula, we have negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative, negative 25 over 1, negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 25, and that's equal to negative 3 plus or minus 5. In other words, x equals minus 8, or x equals 2. See how simple that was? And here's where checking our answer. And again, I won't run through the math and the check, but you can see, indeed, that the arithmetic works out. Both roots are equal to 0.
Let's get a little tougher example. Find the roots of 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Solving for h and k using a equals 2, b equals 3, c equals minus 5. We solve for h and we end up with negative 3 divided by 2 times 2, which is negative 3 fourths. And we're going to leave it to be a fraction. k is going to be negative 5 minus 2 times 9 over 16. That's negative 5 minus 9 over 8 or negative 49 over 8. And we're going to leave that as an improper fraction. However, if we turn it into a mixed number, we'll see that the vertex is negative 3 fourths and negative 6 and 1 eighth. Let's solve for x using the vertex root equation. So we have negative 3 fourths plus or minus the square root of negative negative 49 divided by 2 times 8 or negative 3 fourths plus or minus the square root of 49 over 16 and that's going to be negative 3 fourths plus or minus 7 fourths. If you do the arithmetic you're going to find out that x is equal to negative 2 and a half or x is equal to 1. So while it was a little harder it still really wasn't too tough. We're going to check our answer and again I won't run through the check explicitly you can see it on the screen if you want to pause and follow the fractional math but you can see everything works out both roots end up if you plug them back into the original equation will return zero. So far a has been positive what if a is negative? Well that implies that the parabola is, opens downward and that it is upside down. So let's take an example there negative one-half x squared plus 6x plus 32. Solving for h and k using a equal negative one-half, b equals 6, c equals 32. h is going to be negative 6 divided by 2 times negative one-half. Well the 2 and the negative one-half will yield a negative 1 and so we have a negative and a negative, they'll cancel out, and we end up with just 6. k is 32 minus negative 1 half times 6 squared. That's 32 plus, the negatives cancel out again, 1 half times 36. So that's 32 plus 18, or 50. So our vertex is at 6 and 50. Using this information in the vertex root formula, we end up with 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 50 over negative 1 half. Negatives cancel. We end up with 6 plus or minus the square root of 100, or 6 plus or minus 10. x is negative 4, or x is 16. Let's check this. And again, I'll leave the screen up. You can go through it. And you will see that plugging in the roots into the original equation, both return 0. We've already stated when k and a have the same sign, the roots are going to be nonreal, that is, complex. If you've never had complex arithmetic, please skip the next couple of slides. If you're still with me, instead of the roots being where the points where the parabola intersects y equals 0, notice we're going to see that the parabola never intersects the x-axis. So in order to find the roots, we have to go k above the vertex. In this case, that's going to be 2k. The real part of the root will be h. The imaginary part is going to be the offset. That's going to be plus or minus the square root of minus k over a i. Now, if you're having a hard time visualizing, remember this graph is a two-dimensional projection 
of a three-dimensional plot. It's time for an example showing the complex math. Let's find the roots of 3x squared plus 12x plus 18. Solving for h and k using a equals 3, b equals 12, c equals 18. h yields negative 12 divided by 2 times 3. That's equal to negative 12 divided by 6 or negative 2. k is 18 minus 3 times 2 squared or 18 minus 3 times 4. 18 minus 12 and that's equal to 6. Our vertex is at negative 2, 6. Since k and a are the same sign, we are going to have a complex solution. Solving for x using the vertex root formula, we have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 divided by 3. So negative 2, notice that's the real part, plus or minus the square root of negative 2, pulling the square root of negative 1 out and making it i, we have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 times i. So x equals negative 2 minus the square root of 2i or x equals minus 2 plus the square root of 2i. So you can see even complex arithmetic solutions really are not too difficult. I'm going to check the answer again and here is where the math can get a little tricky so I'm not going to explain it line by line. I'll leave this up and uh, you may want to pause the screen here and check it but indeed you will find for either root the equation will yield zero. Now for fun, let's see if we can derive the quadratic formula using the vertex method. So we start out with our formula of h, k, and x. We plug in k into the vertex root equation. We plug in h into the vertex root equation. And under the radical, we've found the square of that first term. And now we've multiplied the c term, top and bottom, of 4a squared, because we're going to try to combine that fraction. Continuing from the previous slide, we're going to combine those two fractions. Now we're going to combine the denominators. Now we're going to cancel some a's. And you can see in the denominator now, it's 4a squared. We can remove that from the radical. And we should get something that looks like the quadratic formula, except for it's a little different than perhaps what you've learned. It shows the axis of symmetry plus or minus an offset. The usual form is below. So while you may not notice it, if you do use the quadratic formula, you end up calculating the dimensions of the vertex, and we will show that you end up calculating the axis of symmetry twice. So we start off with the first form of the quadratic formula and we're going to take the denominator and we're going to try to put everything back under the radical. We've done that. Next, we're going to separate the fraction under the radical. We've done that. 
Continuing from the previous slide, we actually, on the second term under the radical, we got rid of some 4a's. And look, you st should start to see h pop up again. So plugging in the equation for h, we end up with x equals h plus or minus the square root of h squared minus c over a. So when you use the quadratic formula, you calculate h and h squared. Now notice we could use this equation and go directly to the roots. But if you do that, you're going to miss the side benefit of finding the vertex. So here it is, the vertex method for finding quadratic roots. We have seen that with these three formulae, the vertex method of solving quadratic equation works for both forms of quadratic equations, the vertex and the standard. The nice thing about the vertex method is that it shows the symmetry of the solutions and it keeps the arithmetic to a minimum and it also gives you the vertex which again is useful information. Quite often when a student is told to find the roots they're also told to find the vertex. There is no guessing as in the factoring method and the arithmetic is simpler than completing the square or using the quadratic formula. And I think these three formulae are easy to memorize. Most of us have already memorized the first one, so we just have those other two, and they're quite straightforward. Now there's a third form. It's called the factored form of the quadratic function. So we're going to look at it just to complete our survey of quadratic functions. The goal of the factoring method, though, is to convert the standard method into that above form. And you can see the roots are simply x equals r1 and x equals r2. Again, the negative sign is not included. Notice that a, in this case, has no effect on the roots, but it does affect k. So we are given the roots, so that really is not a problem if you're given a quadratic function in the factored form, but you still might want to know the vertex. So let's develop some equations to do that. So we're going to use the vertex root formula for both roots, and we have r1 equals h minus the square root of minus k over a, and r2 equals h plus the square root of minus k over a. We're going to add those two equations and solve for h. Well, when we add the two equations, that radical gets eliminated, so we're just r1 plus r2 equals 2h, or h is equal to r1 plus r2 divided by 2. Well, that is simply the mean of the two roots. And if you look at the graphs we had earlier, this really should not be unexpected. That's exactly what the axis of symmetry is. It's the mean of the two roots. It's time to derive the equation for k. So we're going to start with the vertex root formula with x equals r. And we can pick either r. It doesn't matter, r1 or r2. Pick the one that makes the math the easiest. So we have r equals h plus the square root of minus k over a, and we move h to the left side, so we have r minus h equals the square root of minus k over a, squaring both sides, so now we have r minus h squared equals minus k over a, and moving a over to the left side, and rearranging a little bit, we have our equation, k is equal to minus a times the quantity r minus h squared. So if you look at this, we could have actually gone back to the original vertex form, stuck in 
x equals r, y equals 0, and we would have come up with the same thing. So notice this equation says that it is the distance between the root and the axis of symmetry squared times negative a gives us k. Here is the vertex method for factored form. Basically two equations. The axis of symmetry is just the mean of the two roots. k is equal to the negative of the width of the parabola, that's the a coefficient, times that offset which we labeled d earlier. That's just between the root and the axis of symmetry squared. And to find k you can use either root and the roots are given to you. So the vertex of course is at h comma k. So let's look at a simple example. We want to find the vertex of 2 times the quantity x plus 1 and x minus 5. Again we're given the roots. The roots are just x equals minus 1 and x equals 5. Solving for h and k, h is just going to be minus 1 plus 5 divided by 2, that's 4 divided by 2, or 2, the mean between minus 1 and 5. k is minus 2 times the quantity, 5 minus 2 squared, so that's minus 2 times 3 squared, or minus 2 times 9, or minus 18. So the vertex is at 2 minus 18. Is this a forgotten method for finding quadratic roots? Well, I couldn't find much on the vertex method after a short search on the internet, which is why I made these slide series. It might be known, but evidently it's not common. It is hoped that the vertex method will be added to the algebra curriculum along with the classic methods to solve quadratic equations. So here's a summary of the formulae that we have developed. You can see for the vertex form, h and k are given to us and the root is the vertex root equation. The standard form, we have an equation for h, an equation for k, and we can use that vertex root equation. For factored form, h is just the mean of the roots, k, a very simple equation, and the roots are given to us. So in conclusion, we have proven that the key to understanding quadratic functions is to know the vertex and how the roots relate. The formula for finding vertex was given for all three types of quadratics, the vertex form, standard form, and factored form. Once you have the vertex, the roots are easy to calculate and the vertex and the standard forms by using that vertex root equation. And the vertex is easy to calculate from the roots and factored form. The vertex does show the axis of symmetry and where the function is a maximum if a is negative or a minimum if a is positive. If you want a quick overview of the formulae without all these derivations, please watch using the quadratic vertex method slideshow. I hope you enjoyed this slide demonstration and I hope you find the vertex method for solving quadratic functions useful.